Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture. So today we'll be learning about how we can access the global surface water. Um, so Global Surface Water um, Explorer is um, a published um, a product or data set uh, sponsored by the European Union. Um, so what it does is um, it documents uh, the um, existence of water, uh, distribution of water across space and time at a global scale for um, the past 38 years. And that's a large volume of data in terms of space and time. And um, it has a variety of data sets, like a monthly data set, percentage of um, uh, water occurrence on, on, a, on any pixel on the, on the globe, um, you know, ranging from one to uh, you know, 100% over the 38 year period. And there are different ways to access the, this data set. This is published uh, uh, the Nature Peer Review Journal. And um, there are different ways of accessing this data set. Um, you know, you can, you can uh, open it in, in QGIS and ArcGIS and you can directly download the data from, um, you know, the website, the Global Surface Water Ex um, Explorer site. Um, but one of the, the ways you can, you can do is there's an app, an Earth Engine app where you can visualize. This is just mostly for visualization, okay? So this is, um, you know, occurrence of water across the globe at a planetary scale uh, for any given point in time uh, for the past 38 years. Uh, so this is just, you can use this app um, to explore, um, you know, to search for any, any location on Earth and, and um, explore the existence of water and frequency of water, seasonality and what have you. Uh, there's a lot of um, information to, to, uh, to take into, um, you know, uh, account to using this data. This is a powerful data set, but this is only like you can, you can only explore using this, this app, right? So if you want to access this exact same data using Earth Engine, uh, that's what this lecture is about. So uh, we'll use uh, a Python API and Google Colab uh, for this lecture. Um, and if it's your first time um, using Google Colab, you need to uh, execute these parts of the code. So you need to import Earth Engine, authenticate that, um, you know, verify your, your, your Google account technically. Uh, and um, before that, you need to have an Earth Engine account. I'm assuming that you, ha you have one. If not, uh, go to Google Earth Engine uh, and, um, and just, um, under Google Earth, Google Earth Engine, uh, you can you can request access. Um, you know they have changed that a little bit here. It used to be um, you know sign up here, so it's get started here. Okay. Um, so you do, 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 let me check here. So use cloud project. Use that cloud project. So click here. Go to the code editor. Um, so they have now a paid and unpaid version. So, um, and then without a Google account here. Okay, so they have changed it a little bit. So to request an account, you go to get get um, started. And especially if you're new, I think um, you have to request um, you know access by signing up here and just uh, provide you need an engine account for educational purpose or research purpose or a non-commercial purpose in, in this case. Um, so you have Earth Engine account using usually you you, you 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 request that using your Gmail account. Once you have that, um, you can execute this code. Import um, import EE means importing Earth Engine and authenticate that, and initialize um, the Earth Engine um, you know application. So once you do that, um, this is an explanation of what the you know global um, uh, surface water uh, product is and and. Um, you know, just some explanation. So let's get started. So the first thing um, is, let me just create a variable, GAC, you know, global surface, um, water or explorer, whatever. Uh, and then I'll add Earth Engine image um, built-in function to load that data. And uh, I'll directly go to Earth Engine. Um, uh, where's that here? So I'll go to directly Earth Engine and then type in global surface water all right and then here you go and then i'll have uh, the id right the image collection id here so i'll copy that here in my collab environment 
All right, so now I've done, um, let me just uh, change to version three since I'm working for this example. Using version three, you can change it to version four if you want to. Um, so yeah, I have my, uh, uh, I'll actually double, double bracket here. And so this, what it, this, this does is it will import all of that um, uh, image collection, global surface water to, to um, um, you know, um, my, my CollLab environment here, the Earth Engine API using a Python API. And so uh, I'll select, um, you know, occurrence, right? So the occurrence variable is, you know, percentage of um, the frequency of water, uh, whether water presents at that specific location um, uh, or not over the past 38 years. And the data range for occurrence range from zero to hundred. That means if it's zero, there was no water at that location or pixel. And if it's a hundred, um, water was occurring hundred percent time. Mostly that is just for permanent water uh, bodies like lakes and whatnot. Okay. So, um, let's, uh, select our occurrence band and I'll create another variable here. Um, occurrence. I'll just create this variable and I'll say occurrence. And I have uh, my imported image collection GSC here, and then select the occurrence um, variable here. So I'll use select uh, feature, and then occurrence. Okay, this will select uh, the occurrence variable, and I'll need um, I'll need to visualize this um, you know uh, uh, data before before I do anything, right? So let's create a visualization parameter. Visualize, visualization parameter, right? So let's just create a visualization parameter. I'll call it these params, okay? So I'll create a, cur um, a curly bracket here. And all right, the minimum value Usually, um, to create some visualization, you need the minimum and maximum value. Um, and in this case, it's zero, right? Uh, I already know that uh, the uh, occurrence variable has uh, data from zero to 100. Uh, 100 means 100 per percent um, occurrence, right? And then finally, let's create a palette. Okay. So my palette, I'll just define some colors here so I'll create red and blue because um, red um, indicates their percent uh, occurrence and then a hundred percent occurrence uh, deep blue anything in between um, you know design editing uh, the um, percentage um, you know of uh, occur you know occurrence um, what are what are occurrence on that on, the, on that specific pixel okay and then um, let's actually um, execute this part of the code. So when we execute that, what it does is it will import this image collection from Earth Engine and select that variable occurrence variable from the entire global surface water product. And then we have also created a visualization parameter. And the next thing is since um, so if you were if you if this was in Earth Engine in the JavaScript API, you can easily just do you know. Uh, map at, at, at layer and then just um, occurrence and then add the visualization parameter. But in, in the Python API Earth Engine that doesn't have this direct, um, you know, map display functionality. So we'll be using a Folium package, uh, a powerful uh, visualization package open source using open source library. So if you're using um, the Python API, I recommend using the Folium package, it's pretty handy. And then I've already created this, um, you know, um, map, uh, you know, uh, widget. Um, you can use it, which even has some Google Satellite hybrid map. I've created it in a way that you can you can switch between, you know, um, Google Map, uh, Google Satellite uh, map, as well as you know, the, the standard Google Map. Okay. So you can, you don't have to write this, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll share the, you know, copy of this code. Um, and so you can simply execute that. So this will create technically something like the JavaScript um, Earth Engine version of a map 
when you uh, when you execute when you click um, you know display map right so last thing is just let's display that so um, I'll add simply just like um, um, you know as you as you, you would do that in Arsene so before I, that I think so here's here's the map our map uh, object here so we have already created that map so what we are calling this here is just that map object that we have already created using folium and then we have defined a zoom level using a lot long you can change this to visualize a different location all right so you don't have to modify this just um, keep it as it is and then the next one is just to include to import actually the layer that we have created which is the occurrence um, layer right so I'll call it here in my map display so map add layer just like the uh, the earth engine JavaScript API, API um, map display something like that and occurrence and I'll also include the visualization parameter which I already created I'll copy that here and actually copy cell here and then include the visualization parameter here oops oh it, it copied everything like so let me just do actually control C that way I'm not copying um, this entire chunk of code <laughs> all right uh, so visualization parameter what else um, and I'll just give it a name like a layer name when I uh, display that I know you know what what that specific layer is all right so I'll say water occurrence Occur, no, water occurs. Water occurrence, okay. Um, and the last thing is just um, what well, now you can display that, but before you do that, um, you, you'll have to add uh, the you know the folium layer control. Uh, so map, um, so map, um, add child. So this will add the volume control, all right? Volume layer control. All right. Um, volume here. All right. So now, last thing is just display. This is how you um, display a map using a folding package um, to run some mapping uh, display or a map canvas um, using the Python API using uh, either Collab or Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so when I execute this, I should uh, be able to visualize something like the or typical Earth engine, right? Look, so this is pretty handy. So you can, uh, you can have actually, um, what is this, this guy here doing? Uh, so you can have, um, let me just actually, Uh, you can you can display you know the Google uh, this is the uh, water occurrence layer you can do open history map or just you can you can change it to satellite uh, you know satellite view satellite background it's pretty handy right um, so you can uh, change it to you know uh, open street map or something like the Google Maps standard and um, Google satellite hybrid what this is um, how this happened is is that um, all right, no, I don't need that one. Oops. Okay. So let's go up a little bit. So this is what's bringing the Google satellite part, like a base map. So I added a base map. Okay. And so nice. So let's just um, look at that. Oops. All right. Okay, I'll execute that again. All right, uh, let me just do that again. Let me execute that, execute that, and execute. Okay, perfect. So now I have my you know layer control, right? I can just uh, toggle here and also add the, actually let's do a background here. So what we uh, visualize here is just, let's go to some, some different place. Uh, it's, it's fine here, okay. So these are some of the Rift Valley Lakes in East Africa. Uh, specifically in Ethiopia and then Kenya. 
um so you have the water but so blue is 100 percent water occurrence so that means um over the 38 year period you have water almost all the time and the reason is that this is just a permanent lake right uh this is a permanent lake so you can see this is a permanent lake so it's obvious that you know water is existing all the time but let's look at another place here uh you look at this area it's pretty you know purple the reason is that uh there was water um uh you know on this area for a certain period of time right and there's also another thing here if you look at you know the uh, peripheries of this like water uh, this uh, water body you can see it's uh, pretty you know purple the reason is that there's some uh, you know drying of um, this lake so um, you know receding the 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 uh, the amount of uh, water uh, within this lake or just uh, total, the total water area or volume of water in this lake is uh, receding so uh, that's also one indicator um, you know th that's just how uh, you, you would interpret um, um, this uh, occurrence data occurrence map you can also see some you know some flooding happening temporary uh, or seasonal um, you know inundation sounds like the purple areas and you know the river is blue mostly because you know the water was existing 100% of the time over the 38 year period where this this um, analysis um, was done or um, for the time period that this this uh, global water uh, product was generated okay uh, this is uh, the blue Nile uh, you can see that um, you know the blue Nile um, uh, you know main channel here uh, there's some dam here um, and you can see here the blue Nile, the, the Nile Delta here. Um, you know, some flooding happening over here, obviously. Um, so it's pretty interesting. Um, you can you can um, customize this to various applications, uh, but this is a powerful data set. You know, for any analysis that um, uses. Um, uh, you know global surface surface water um, and there are different um, you know other data sets um, you know water occurrence annual annual water monthly water and whatnot so you know we'll, we'll, we'll explore uh, some of this in, in future lectures uh, for now that's um, that's it uh, for the uh, global uh, water occurrence data using the global surface water product thanks